be some tips for um, uh, portraiture, because the staff here does a lot of portraiture for their stories often. Any um, with portraits and stuff like that, just try to find out what's unique about the person that you're shooting. Because people usually won't tell you things about themselves, but if you kind of give yourself a little time, you'll learn things. Like, I had a model come in one time, she sat there for half an hour with me, and she was one of the top ballet dancers in the world, and I didn't know it. And as soon as she told me that, I was like, oh, I got an idea now. So, uh, people will kind of let you know mm -hmm. what, you know, and a lot of it has to be about you all kind of coming to, to grips with what you want to do. Because sometimes you want to do something they don't want to do. And sometimes they want to do things you don't want to do. So mm -hmm. you kind of have to find people who do what you like to do. Because even if you're doing things for other people, if you're not being paid, you're not going to be happy. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, you just won't. So you have to kind of find people who like to do the things you like to do. And how, do you, how do you know when to compromise um, when you're trying to work collaboratively, collaboratively with your, your subject? Like you have a you have a vision and you're trying hard to convince your subject to play along with, um, with the vision that you have for the portrait and you're getting resistance from your subject. Um, it, it's that it's tough. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. It's hard to even tell people what you really want because most of the time you're not even sure of how to go about getting it. It's really, really difficult. I think um, I've been fortunate because most of the people who come to me want their pictures taken. Mm -hmm. So they kind of leave, put themselves in my hands. They just kind of feel, do your thing, and they let me do it. And sometimes it works, and other times it doesn't. I don't feel the chemistry with people. And when I was younger, I didn't care about chemistry. But as I got older, I started realizing that if I wasn't happy with the shot, I felt, felt like I wasted my time, mm -hmm. you know. So I love this shot because she was lit from underneath. And that's what this was about, uh, was the lighting. Nudes are interesting thing because most people, especially in America, still view nudity from a sexual standpoint. Nudity, all artists, real artists, do nudes. And the reason they do nudes is not because of sex. They do nudes because it's timeless. When you shoot a nude, it doesn't make any difference if it was shot five minutes ago or 50 years ago. You're not going to know it. And people want their work to be immortal. This is kind of where I'm at now. This is the kind of stuff that I'm doing now. It's uh, this Monument Valley, of course, if you want to give it my own little spin. And I kind of started off backwards. And um, I'm kind of making up for it now. I started off as a really creative photographer. I knew nothing technically about photography. I just didn't know anything. People would be talking about, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and then I started realizing, i got to start knowing this stuff, so in the last 10 years I've really gone back to learn everything about chemical chemistry and, and light and what light does to film. Because when you're shooting a camera, the camera doesn't see light, it only sees dark, it only sees shadow, it doesn't see any light. So you have to shoot for the shadow and process for the light. So that's the whole key to black and white photography. It's Clouds, look. This is right across the street at the Presidio. When the Presidio opened, it's Hector Sosa. He's like sixth generation Tucsonian. And he lets you know it. My other favorite thing, I love flowers. That's the same thing again, lighting, te texture. taking people's photos who didn't like to be photographed. Yeah. Do you have any tips on how to make them comfortable or what you do with dealing with a situation like that? Take your ego out of it. It can't be about you. And that's, you know, when people come into the studio, I don't care if they're famous or not, I could care less. And, and they know that. You know, it's like, let's do this. I, I got out of college. I was um, working as a floor waiter. And we um, had a layoff. And I passed this junk store. And they had a camera sitting in the window. And I went in, and it was $25, and I talked her down to 10 bucks. And the first roll of film I processed cost me more than the camera did to, to buy and shoot. So I decided I was going to try to make money doing it. What basically happened was, and I brought, I brought this with me. 
Um, there was a photo competition with international, it's called Sekyo Shimbun. Sekyo Shimbun is one of the largest newspapers in the world. And uh, they had this photo competition, and I entered the competition. Well, anyway, I got this notice in the mail, and it said to go down, you know, got to pick up this package. And in the package was this medal. And this is first prize for winning. And I've always kept it, it's always been, it's a lion on top of a mountain. And it really, it really, really, really inspired me. It's like, I actually have talent to do this. Because the hardest part as an artist is that your friends will always tell you you're good. They'll tell you you're really good. You can't listen to them. You have to listen to people who have made it. You can appreciate the fact that people who don't know what they're talking about appreciate your work and what you do. But you really have to go, if you're going to do this as a living, for a living, if you're going to be a true artist, you have to somehow find yourself in your art. There are three things that are important to do, and one of the things is to find home, where you want to be in life. And this is a, you know, you are young, and believe me, I wish someone had told me this. I've traveled and traveled and traveled, and what I've been looking for is home, where I feel comfortable, where I want to be, uh, and then to do my art. And without that, you don't really feel settled. And it's very important that you feel settled in your art so that you can do your art. It is very hard to be creative if you're stressed. Very difficult. So the more that you can ease your mind and feel good about your environment and the people around you, um, the easier it is for you to do your art and to do something with your art. The other thing that inspired me and, and pushed me on was Irving Penn is like the greatest photographer who's ever lived to me. And I always loved his work, and I found a big project, and he called me, and he said, I love your stuff. And I thought I was going to faint. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> and believe it or not, coming to Tucson has been one of the most humbling experiences of my life. Because before I came here, I was one of the biggest photographers in the world. And you come here and people don't understand that they could give a shit <laughs> that you are, what you are, who you were, or what you... And it's, it's a beautiful thing in a way because it's made me kind of look at myself and go, why are you doing this? So, but that's the, the beauty of, of being an artist. Is that in the end, I mean, you think of Van Gogh, never sold a painting. And you know he would roll over in his grave if he saw what his paintings are selling for now. <laughs> see. Leonardo da Vinci, same thing. Outcast in Florence for being gay. Okay. So his whole life was to make fun of the art industry. Mona Lisa had a smile. That was a no-no. We weren't supposed to smile. Women weren't supposed to smile in photographs and paintings. But he had this little smirk on her face. And it was just to tell the establishment, go screw yourself. And I love him for it. I love every minute of the fact that he would be that way, that he was that strong, that he could do that. And you all will have to make that statement too. You have to make a statement that separates you from everyone else who does what you do. That was my whole focus of being a photographer. How can I make my work different from Irving Penn's? Because when you first start, you, you imitate other people. But as you come into self, you start to do your own thing. And the most beautiful thing that's happened to me in my career is when I used to look at magazines, I said, God, I really wish I could have shot that image. I really wish I... And now when I look at a magazine, I'm not that impressed. I know my work is as good, if not better. And it's not just ego, it's the truth. I know from what I've achieved, from what, what, I, what I've left behind. Don't get wrapped up in the money. Find home, find where you want to be. It's really, really, really important. Having roots. Yes, sir. So, uh, there is no tomorrow. Everything is today. And the valuable lesson I learned in life, and I'll share this with you, yesterday's victories are not today's victories, and yesterday's failures are not today's failures. You have to start each day fresh. And it doesn't make you do what you did yesterday. You have to clear that page. Etch a sketch. Just shake it. Just tap it all over. So if you can do that, you'll always be creative. If you get wrapped up in what you've done, you know, remember uh, the, the Incredibles? And she says, well, you made it. She goes, I never look back, darling. It distracts from the now. And that's, that's exactly the mentality of she